we're going to take a look at subtracting fractions. And we're going to study two different methods. You can use whichever you like best. I'm going to show you first how you can use something called negative fractions. And then second, I'm going to show you how to borrow. So if we want to take a look at negative fractions, we want to subtract 2 and 1 third minus 5 ninths. Well, we know the first thing we have to do is get a common denominator. So in this case, our common denominator is going to be 9. So we have to say to ourselves, what did we do to 3 to change it to a 9? We multiply it times 3. But if we do it to the bottom, we have to do it to the top. So 2 and 1 thirds has been renamed as 2 and 3 ninths minus 5 ninths. Now the problem is the first fraction right here, 2 and 3 ninths, the 3 is less than the 5. That's the part that always throws people off, but we can deal with that just fine. What we can say is we'll bring down our whole number two, so that comes straight down. And we say to ourselves, what is three minus five? Three minus five is negative two, and then we just carry over our denominator, ninths. So it's two minus two ninths. So in other words, we have full two, so if we take a look over here to the right and we look at this nice picture, we have two holes and we want to pull out only two parts of the nines. We want to pull out those two parts. So what are we really left with? Well, we're left with one hole and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nines remain. All right, so in other words, we subtract the whole number from the whole number, and we subtract the fractions from each other, and we remove the fraction from the whole number. Let's look at another method. How about if we really aren't comfortable with the negatives and we want to do something called borrowing? We start with the same first step. We need to get a common denominator. Again, nine will work for us. So we're going to multiply the bottom times three, and the top times 3, we'll rename this as 2 and 3 ninths, minus 5 ninths, right? So we're back to the same scenario, but it's hard to do 3 minus 5. So what we can do, and this is the nice part, is we can borrow from our whole, borrow from our 2, and make it a 1. And what we can say is it's really 1 and 9 not because 1 and 9 ninths is totally equivalent to 2. Now we still have this fraction 3 ninths left to the side, so we have to add on our 3 ninths, and that renames this as 1 and 12 ninths. So 1 and 12 ninths is totally equivalent to 2 and 3 ninths. How do we know that? Well, we can look at our diagram here and say, this is one whole, right? And then what are we left with? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve parts of nine. So one and twelve ninths is equivalent to two and three ninths. Now, what's nice is I could do one and twelve ninths minus five ninths easily and comfortably, because these are numbers I'm used to working with, one minus nothing is one, 12 minus five is seven, and then nine is my denominator. So I get the answer both ways. Now I do want to show you that there is a little shortcut for borrowing. This would be the long method. What you really can do as a shortcut is again, let me rewrite this. You've got two and three ninths. We can borrow from the two and make it a one. And then all you need to do is add your numerator and your denominator. So nine plus three gives you 12. And then keep the same denominator. So again, you still get one and 12 ninths in just a shorter way, minus five ninths. One minus nothing is one. 12 minus 5 is 7, and bring my denominator over.
and I get one and seven ninths again. So whichever method you prefer, they all work. They're both good. It's just what you feel is most comfortable.